today we are going to talk about something which is really critical and uh, since I've been covering this company for a very long time at the same time I have been interacting with the community uh, and I've seen some misinformation there so I just wanted to talk about it and that is Suze. As you all know Suze has been resold, reacquired and this time the buyer is EQT from Sweden. They bought Suze from Microfocus and if I'm not wrong this is the fourth acquisition of Suze all the way from early days from Novel to Attachmate to Microfocus and to Equity. The I feel that Suze went through the roughest patch during Novel days because Novel had their own proprietary products and they were somehow either competing with uh, Suze's open source project at the same time they're trying to integrate them so there was a lot of conflict at the same time back in those days Novel had an agreement with Microsoft and that was the hot you know, period where a lot of things were going on in terms of patents aggression from Microsoft. So Suze got beaten up a bit back in those days, though by now Microsoft has changed totally. They are kind of, you know, I, I consider them as a you know brand new company with a totally new approach. They are very friendly to Linux and open source. I talk to them often, so, so I do know what is going on in there. But once Suze was acquired by Attachment, then things changed because Suze kind of became a kind of independent business within Attachment because Attachment uh, split Suze and Novel, and that's when Nils Brockman and his team they 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 took the you know kind of leadership of Suze and start driving the company in the right direction. And then when Suze kind of stabilized, and then Attachment kind of merged. Or by was acquired by Microfocus. That's when um, uh, Suze got financial stability from Microfocus because though even if Microfocus was not a very well-known company, uh, they they were into a legacy business, so they did have a lot of financial uh, support that Suze needed at that time. And after that, you must have seen that Suze has been hiring people a lot. They have grown beyond their typical Linux uh, market, and they are into cloud and containers and all those you know latest emerging technology stuff that they are doing now. I've been talking to Nils Brockman every SuzeCon. I meet him and talk to him, and uh, I talk to a lot of other you know top tier Suze folks all the way from CTO which is Thomas to Michael Miller and so, so, so I have a very good idea where Suze is heading at the same time I have a lot of friends within the open Suze community because I also use open Suze tumbleweed so I do get a lot of insights uh, from from the company that was going on in there both on the community side as well as the company side so I'm quite confident that things are moving in the right direction so when I heard this story that they are going to get acquired I, 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 you know, I was like, okay, let's talk about it. So I, I talked, you know, I set up a phone call with Michael Miller, who is the VP of Strategy and Alliance at Suze. And we had a, you know, 30 minute long discussion over phone where we, you know, discuss different topics. So uh, th th there are certain questions people have in their mind. So I tried to get answer to this question. I have posted a story which you can read. But here's the gist. The number one is that you may be wondering who is EQT? So, uh, as Miller uh, explains that he calls them a growth uh, investor uh, unlike other invest you know private investors where they inv buy a company and then they try to squeeze as much profit from those you know hot companies as quickly as they can uh, and then there are companies who acquire you know promising companies and they operate those companies for a long term so that they can get profit for them. So these equity or you know private equity firms, they don't invest in the company per se. They they, they look at the company. Their business model is basically that there is a promising company, acquire them, operate them, and make money from them. And then you know you can let them die or you can sell them off again. So you invest like let's say two billion in a, into a company, and after three years or four years or five years, uh, you will sell that company for let's say ten billion. Or in the meat so 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 this is this is how it works it's more like investing like venture capitalist but it's different kind of uh, but the way equity is different according to Michael Miller is that they are growth um, investors they are not you know the typical pri private equity investors so what they do is that they invest heavily into 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 the areas where Suze needs support at the moment so they can grow rapidly and fast and become successful so they can 
by they I mean equity can get returns on their investment faster. But this investment is coming not through the cost cutting or operating the company that they want, but instead it comes through investing heavily into the company and get heavy returns back. And Suze is already a promising company. Uh, last year they made something around $305 million. Of course, that is not huge compared to Red Hat, which is something about $4 billion. billion. But I mean, if you look at Suze's history, it has been going through a rough page. I mean, rough patch, but the company is resilient enough to just continue to survive and thrive. And uh, the problem with the Suze was that it was mostly trying, in my opinion, those Suze people may disagree, is was just trying to stay afloat, try to survive. Now it has money to not only survive, but it spread its wings and actually take off and fly. And that's what they have been doing. If you look at Suze's stories for the last two years, ever since Microfocus acquired them, uh, I mean, they are in the cloud now. They have their own open stack. They have Cloud Foundry um, uh, distribution and they have container platform. So they are, you know, spreading into the areas where they need to spread. Uh, so, so that is what, you know, equity will get in, you know, from Suze. You know, they will invest in Suze and they'll get a lot of money back. Now, Miller says that, you know, equity typically gives three to five years to a company. Uh, to, to show some returns. So you can safely assume that Equity will be investing in uh, Suze for at least three to five years before they start squeezing profits out of them. But as I said, Suze is already a profit making company from what I know. And uh, so they, they, it should be, uh, you know, uh, and it's, it's more about the more you add sugar, the sweeter it becomes. So the more money Equity invest into Suze, the better it will be. Now, what about Microfocus? If Suze was a profit-making company, why would they sell it? Now, Miller says that Microfocus is also kind of growth equity you know, investor. They acquired Suze and they sold at a profit. Uh, but Microfocus itself was going through a rough time. The, the reason was that I feel they made a big bet, big mistake by acquiring HP assets last year or last last year for 8.8 .8 billion dollars that was massive hpe was already kind of struggling so they bought hpe and uh, that was a big hit and then their ceo left the company and the company's shares also start tanking so even if uh, suze was relatively profit making company it was making gradual profits this offer is something that was great help or micro focus suddenly you are looking at two point you know eight two point five billion dollars cash that's a lot of money to recover all those losses that you're making so it was you know a deal they could not say no to so they sold it so that's what it meant for micro uh, focus now what does it mean for Suze? As I explained earlier that equity will be investing in Suze and this is what Suze needs I was reading a story at Oh My God Ubuntu and uh, I was kind of, uh, it's funny uh, because uh, the, the author wrote that hey, Suze is not a company that is innovating and they should innovate. <laughs> Innovation is the, the most uh, uh, abused word in the, in the tech world. Everybody is innovating something. But what are we innovating? And uh, here is the thing that well, people don't understand. Uh, innovation is good, it's important, but most important is that what are you going to do with that innovation? I innovate, let's say, a, a mechanism where you can fly cars. But if there, are, there aren't enough business models, they can build a business around these flying cars. What good is that innovation or technology? So more important or equally important is what are you going to do with that technology? If you look at the whole desktop Linux world, you'll see a lot of innovations, so-called innovations happening. But you cannot put it to use, you cannot bring it to users, so it fails. So what Suze is doing is that it solves real problem for real people and not those problems doesn't have to be innovative. Sometimes you just have to help a company run their infrastructure safely in a stable manner so they can run their business. That is why Suze is being used across Europe, across South America and a lot of you know, Asian countries. Uh, by companies which has been around for 
decades because it offers that stability. So, so this is that's what SUSE has been doing for a very long time. And SUSE, don't forget, is the oldest Linux vendor. Linux was uh, announced in 1991 by Linux Torvalds. In 1992, SUSE came into existence. In 1993, Red Hat came into existence. And SUSE has also been one of the leading contributors, one of the leading contributors to a lot of open source technologies. So, so saying that they are not innovating simply means that you are not keeping an eye on where what technologies are being developed. If you're just looking at the desktop icons, then yeah, maybe SUSE is not investing. But if you look at a lot of other work that is going on there, SUSE is doing a lot of things. Linux Torvalds is not innovating anything other than Linux, Linux kernel and Gate, but the way he manages and maintains Linux kernel, that is even more critical than all, all of innovation put together. So please don't abuse the term innovation. SUSE has been contributing a lot and they are contributing uh, whatever you can expect from a company like that. So that's great. Go and see any open source projects, not the desktop project, not the RSS feeds uh, for the Linux desktop, but actual open source project and you'll see SUSE there. So uh, what it means for SUSE is that as they evolve further, you know, graduate from being a Linux vendor and they go and target all these emerging technologies, and as Michael Miller told me that, you know, they are looking at machine learning, they are looking at IoT, of course, containers and cloud is already there. Uh, so they need to, uh, to, 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 to have technologies, in-house expertise, actual technology that they can productize. Sometimes companies, you know, adopt the organic route, you know, where uh, technologies are developed in-house over a period of time. At the same time, the market is changing so rapidly that you cannot afford to have that much time to develop those technologies. So what you do is you look around and you acquire companies that have developed those technologies. And that's why you see a lot of acquisition happens. Even companies like Microsoft or Apple or Google, they cannot develop everything internally. Uh, you know, so, so they do have to go out and acquire companies. So uh, when I talked to Miller, so he said, you know, that uh, equity will be, you know, investing in two areas. First of all, to support and run their existing business, which means uh, hire more people <clears throat> so that they can expand their team because the business is growing so you need more people to handle that business at the same time uh, invest in you know, buying new technologies and new companies so 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 that's how Suze, uh, Suze will get help from equity to grow at a very faster pace than it was growing earlier under micro focus so I think that is good news for Suze at the same time since under equity, SUSE will not be another business unit of another software company, which has been happening since Novel, Attachment, and Microfocus days. Now, SUSE is an independent, kind of independent company inside an equity firm. So, being an independent company also means that they don't have the same infrastructure that they were getting at Microfocus or Novel or at Attachment. Now, they will have to hire a lot of more top tier people like they have, they need a CFO, uh, they need a CIO and a, a lot of other people, sorry, uh, who can, you know, handle those areas. So Miller told me that, you know, they will actually be expanding not only the top tier, but also a lot of other areas where they need to grow faster. So you will be seeing SUSE actually growing in, in, the, in the coming years. So, so from SUSE's perspective, I think it's a good news because that's the kind of help they needed. Now, what does it mean for OpenSUSE? So I was talking to Richard Brown, who's a good friend of mine, and he's also the chairman of OpenSUSE board. I think my focus is shifting because it's GH5S, and I set it on autofocus, and you know, GH5S is not known for autofocusing. Anyway, so I, was, I got up in the morning, and I started chatting, and he was in the UK for, on a vacation, and he said, you know, he got a call from Brockman, who is the CEO of SUSE, to reassure him that First of all, that you heard the news from me. And second is that, you know, nothing is going to change. So I asked his opinion and he was like, I mean, that's true. You know, open SUSE or open source is the heart of SUSE. In today's world, you cannot survive or sustain or grow without open source. So open source is very, very critical to SUSE. And I mean, that's there, you know, when you look at SUSE or Red Hat, uh, these two companies, you know, open source is the heart and soul of these companies. So. That is not going to change. So nobody in the open SUSE or open source community should worry about anything changing. In fact, it may get better and better because being a being an independent business unit, uh, Brockman won't have to you know justify to a board you know why you know we are doing this. 
uh, so because that's how we do it right open source is the way how do we think so there's no argument as such so uh, so i think in overall i feel that uh, things are going to get better for suze after this acquisition because first of all they are going to be an independent company which you know which will be making decision for themselves uh, all the profit that they make will be invested back into the company for the future growth at the same time uh, EQT will be injecting them with all the steroids that they need to further grow. So, I mean, there is no no worries in terms of Suze that, oh, uh, they're getting acquired again. No, but uh, it's all good. Um, uh, eventually, I would love to see Suze become an independent company like Suze, INC, like Red Hat or Microsoft or Google or Apple. So when I asked Miller, you know, of course, Suze has already always been owned by a different, another company, so they don't have any say. Microfocus could have spent Suze as an independent business, uh, so that you know it could just run independently. But the thing was, they needed you know, as, as I said, they were going through a rough patch, so um, it was it made more sense for them to sell it and get that billion dollars uh, than to you know spin it as an independent company. But as um, Equity gives Suze at least three to five years this may be the time where Suze doesn't have to kind of be uh, accountable to another software vendor. Uh, they may pursue the, the road of becoming an uh, uh, independent company, though I cannot comment or say precisely, or even Miller did not you know, say specifically, but he said that that is you know, one of the options they will be looking as they move forward. And I think, you know what? Uh, looking at the political situation that is going on in this world, number one, the way uh, the Trump administration is waging an unnecessary trade war, and which is going to hurt Americans a lot. At the same time, next year Brexit is happening, so I think this is good news for Suze because uh, Microfocus is a US UK based company. After Brexit, things are going to be very very challenging because Suze is a Germany uh, German company, and there will be a lot of things that will create a lot of conflict in the UK. So UK and US are going to the same phase right now. Uh, they created unnecessary chaos for no reason. Uh, so so uh, by, you know, by getting bought by a Swedish company, uh, Suze has kind of, you know, uh, avoided all those, you know, challenges that would have come with Brexit next year. At the same time, being a, a Europe-based company, Suze is kind of uh, because you know, as the trade war, war is looming and uh, a lot of uh, concerns are you know being you know around US-based companies, uh, Suze might be in a, in a position to take advantage of this and may spread its presence within uh, within uh, uh, the block or within uh, those countries which are you know kind of facing a trade war with the US. So uh, it may see you know uh, growth in adoption within within Europe. Uh, within South America or within Asian countries. So that would also mean good news for Suze. Anyway, in overall, I think this is really good news and we should be happy about it that, you know, Suze is actually gradually moving towards becoming an independent company. So that's my overall analysis of uh, uh, what's going on with Suze. Uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can keep in, you know, you, you updates every day. At the same time, you all know that um, as I'm building TFIR, I'm looking for sponsorships. So uh, we have a lot of things to offer to companies. So if you want to become a sponsor, uh, if you want us to talk about your technologies, your business models, please uh, become a sponsor of TFIR. You can find, uh, just mail it to me and I'll send you all the details. And as far as our readers are concerned, if you value our content, please become a supporter to Patreon. The links to the Patreon is below. So uh, as you all know, there's no free lunch. Somebody has to pay the bills. So please support the good work that you enjoy. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye for now.